All souls, no matter how ancient you feel, may discover that each lifetime requires healing from trauma of the past. And as you go through life, you will find that on your journey, you will have to look at things that happened in your past that was traumatic to you or that gave you some sort of pain to carry in the pain body. So there will come a time in everyone's life as they age where they finally recognize some of the traumatic events and experiences that they once had and they will have to heal from them in order to feel like they are whole again, like they have come into their own being. So this is a story of a man that helped many heal their inner child, heal from a past of trauma and suffering. And only as they aged do they discover that this is what was keeping them down in life, making them go through hard times in adulthood and showing up in their relationships with others as well as with themselves. This is a story about John's Awakening, the almost tragic story of a tender elf by John Bradshaw. Once upon a time, there was a tender little elf. He was a very happy elf. He was bright and curious and knew the secrets of life. For an example, he knew that love was a choice, that love involved hard work, and love was the only way. He knew that he could do magic things and that his unique form of magic was called creativity. The little elf knew that as long as he truly created, there would be no violence. And he knew the greatest secret of all, that he was something rather than nothing. He knew he was being, and that being was everything. This was called the secret of I amness. The creator of all elves was the great I am. The great I am always was and always will be. No one knew how or why this was true. The great I am was totally loving and creative. Another most important secret was a secret of balance. The secret of balance meant that all life is a marriage of opposites. There is no life without physical death, no joy without sorrow, no pleasure without pain, no light without darkness, no sound without silence, no good without bad. True health is a form of wholeness, and wholeness is holiness. The great secret of creativity was to balance a wild, creative, unfocused energy with a form that allows that energy to be. One day, our tender elf, whose name, by the way, was Johnny, was given another secret. This secret scared him a little. The secret was that he had a mission he must do before he could create forever. He had to share his secrets with a ferocious tribe of non-elves. You see, elf life was so good and wonderful that the secret of that wonder needed to be shared with those who didn't know anything about the wonderment. Goodness always wants to share itself. Each elf was assigned to one family of the ferocious non-elf tribe. The non-elf tribe was called the Sunma. The Snonma knew no secrets. They often squandered their beans. They worked endlessly and seemed to feel alive only when they were doing something. Some elves referred to them as dews. They also killed one another and engaged in war. And sometimes, at sporting events and music concerts, they trampled one another to death. Johnny entered his Snomma family on June 29, 1933, at 3.05 a.m. He had no idea what was in store for him. He didn't know that he would have to use every ounce of his creativity in order to tell his secrets. When he was born, he was given the Snomma name Farquhar. His mother was a beautiful 19-year-old princess who was ravished by a need to perform. She had a strange curse on her. The curse was a neon bulb that rested in the middle of her forehead. And whenever she tried to play, have fun, or just be, the light blinked on and a voice said, Do your duty. She could never just do nothing and be. 
Farquhar's father was a short but handsome king. He also carried a curse. He was haunted by his wicked witch mother, Harriet. She lived on his left shoulder. Any time he tried to just be, she screamed and yelled. Harriet was always telling him to do something. In order for Farquhar to tell his parents and others his secrets, they needed to be quiet and stop doing long enough to see and hear him. This they could not do. His mom because of the neon bulb, and his dad because of Harriet. From the moment he was born, Farquhar was all alone. Since he had the body of a snama, he also had the feelings of a snama, and because of his abandonment he felt furious, deeply frustrated and hurt. Here he was, a tender elf, who knew the great secrets of I Am, and no one would listen to him. What he had to say was life-giving, but his parents were so busy doing their duty they could not learn from him. In fact, his parents were so confused they thought that it was their job to teach Farquhar to do his duty. Any time he failed to do what they thought was his proper duty, they punished him. Sometimes they ignored him by putting him in his room. Sometimes they hit him or screamed at him. In fact, Farquhar hated the screaming the worst. He could take the isolation, and the hitting was over with quickly, but the screaming and endless telling him about his duty went so deep that it even threatened his elf soul. Now you cannot kill an elf soul, because it is part of the great I am, but it can be so badly wounded that it seems like it isn't there anymore. This is what happened to Farquhar. In order to survive, he stopped trying to show his mother and father his secrets and instead pleased them by performing and doing his duty. His mom and dad were very unhappy snamas. Actually, most snamas are unhappy unless they learn the secret of the elves. Farquhar's dad was so tormented by Harriet that he used all his energy to find a magic potion that took away all his feelings. But the magic was not creativity. It actually took away his creativity. Farquhar's dad became like a walking dead man, and after a while, he stopped even coming home. Farquhar's snama heart was broken. You see, every snama needs both his father's and his mother's love in order to let the elf in him tell his secrets. Farquhar was overwhelmed by his father's abandonment, and since his father could no longer help his mother, her neon bulb blinked more intensely. Consequently, Farquhar was yelled at and conjoled even more. By the time he reached his twelfth birthday, he'd forgotten he was an elf. A few years later, he learned about the magic potion that his father used to kill Harriet's voice. At fourteen, he started using it often. By his thirtieth year, he had to be carried away to a Snama hospital. While in this hospital, he heard an inner voice urging him to wake up. The voice that moved him to wake up was the being voice of his elf soul. For you see, no matter how bad it gets, the elf voice will always call a Snama to celebrate his being. Johnny never gave up. He never stopped trying to save Farquhar. If you're a Snama and you're listening, please remember this. You have an elf soul in you that is always trying to call to your being. When Farquhar was lying in the hospital and he was 30 years old, he finally heard Johnny's voice. That made all the difference and that is the beginning of another better story.